Hey everybody, I just think the kitties are being really cute, so I'm going to make another video. Henny kind of looks like, like he's not well, but he's fine. He's just sleeping. Custer, Henny. Okay, let's read Exodus 3 and then um, Mark, what did I say? 15? 16? Well, Exodus 3. Now Moses, tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, drove the flock into the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire out of a bush. He gazed, and there was a bush, all aflame, yet the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I must turn aside to look at this marvelous sight. Why doesn't the bush burn up? When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. And he said, Do not come closer. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. I am he said, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord continued, I have marked well the plight of my people in Egypt, and have heeded their outcry because of their taskmasters. Yes, I am mindful of their sufferings. I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the region of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, moreover, I have seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, and you shall free my people, the Israelites, from Egypt. But Moses said to God, uh, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and free the Israelites from Egypt? And he said, I will be with you. That shall be your sign that it was I who sent you. And when you have freed the people from Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Moses said to God, When I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, Eya Asher Eya. He continued, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, Eya sent me to you. And God said further to Moses, Thus shall you speak to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This shall be my name forever. This my appellation for all eternity. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to me and said, I have taken note of you and of what is being done to you in Egypt, and I have declared, I will take you out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to you. Then you shall go with the elders of the Israel to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, manifested himself to us. Now, therefore, let us go a distance of three days into the wilderness to sacrifice to the Lord our God. Yet I know that the king of Egypt will let you go only because of a greater might. So I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with various wonders, which I will work upon them. After that, he shall let you go. 
and I will dispose of the Egyptians favorably toward this people so that when you go, you will not go away empty-handed. Each woman shall borrow from her neighbor and the lodger in her house objects, objects of silver and gold and clothing and you shall put these on your sons and daughters, thus stripping the Egyptians. Okay, the end of Exodus chapter 3. Um, so, yeah. Yep, yeah, Exodus chapter 3. So, Moses, God appears in the burning bush. It's funny because this translation is the... Um, new JPS translation according to the traditional Hebrew text and um, I guess they use the actual Hebrew so in verse 14 when and God said to Moses Eya Asher Eya I know you know in our English translation it would be um, I am that I am you know when God says I am and that's his name <laughs> interesting Okay, well, let's move on to Mark chapter, um, wait, where am I? Mark. Turning pages. Okay, so, yeah, we're, I think we're, this is the last chapter of Mark. Okay, so we're making it through the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16. And when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he said to you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him, while they were mourning and weeping. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. And after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. And they went away and reported it to the others, but they did not believe them either. And afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, and he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. And they promptly reported all these instructions to Peter and his companions. And after that, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Hmm. Okay, well that's the end of Mark chapter 16. 
Interesting. He He rose from the dead. Resurrection, good news. Okay. Well, Okay, everybody. Well, on that note, we'll we'll call it we'll call it, call it a Bible reading. All right, take care. Bye.